Hi, my name is Jamila Pomeroy. I am a writer, model, actor, and filmmaker based in Vancouver, BC. I've been passionate about the environment my whole life, and I'm especially interested in making sustainability more accessible and a little bit more fun. In urban spaces and food deserts, growing food is difficult and can often cost a premium. What if I told you there were new and innovative ways for us to get accessibly priced local produce into urban spaces? Imagine this field is full of vegetables. Now what if I told you you could grow the same amount of food in a shipping container? I'm here at Cubic Farms to learn more about innovative farming systems. So tell me a little bit about Cubic Farms. What is Cubic Farms? So Cubic Farms is an ag tech company and we develop uh, commercial scale automated indoor growing systems that let you grow commercial scale amounts of both food for people and actually feed for livestock locally, you know, anywhere on earth, 12 months a year, and using very little water, very little energy, and very little labor. What you see here might look like a, a container, but it's really a stainless steel grow room and we build the, the machine into the outside walls. Uh, so why don't I take you through and show you how each component comes together to form a very efficient system. So let me first show you our irrigation system that we call our fertigator. Come on in. So we've developed this system so you can deliver the right amount of water and nutrients to each individual crop. So you can really dial in the precise amount of water and nutrients. I know a lot of um, conventional farming systems use a lot of water, pesticides, herbicides, but that doesn't happen here. That's right. So, uh, for example, water usage. Uh, to grow, for example, a head of lettuce in one of our machines, it would use about two bottles of water compared to, say, 40 bottles of water grown in a conventional farm. And then, of course, we're in a clean environment. We don't have any pests. We simply don't need pesticides and herbicides. So this is the propagator. So for two to three weeks, will germinate and then you'll have in two to three weeks a seedling that's then ready to transplant into a cultivator which I'll show you in a second. So first of all you can see that you get incredibly high germination rates. Almost every seed successfully grows. One of these propagation machines will actually germinate two and a half to three million seedlings per year in one machine. So let me take you to the next step of the process. Here you see, as we've transplanted them from the propagator into the cultivator, you're now giving them a lot more room to grow and get much larger. Definitely. This actually lets you see how we get that one row of light at the top and hundreds of trays of plants that sort of move throughout and all come to the front. So this machine's ready for harvest. These plants are now full size. So I know that climate change is a huge issue for farmers. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how the system is helping combat that? Farmers need to be able to diversify. Climate change is affecting what they can grow, where they can grow, and, and how reliable that, that grow is. They're not just losing crops, they're often losing plants. Between the heat dome that we had last year and then a few months later the floods, it's decimating farms. So this kind of technology lets you continue to grow despite those changes. But then we've also got to be able to grow what we eat where we live from a food security standpoint. And then of course, we're already using all of the world's freshwater and agricultural land right now. Yeah. And climate change is only causing those, you know, both water and land to be even under more pressure. So a system like this, where you're 52 times more efficient, it really checks off all the boxes for the farmer, for the food security issue, and for the environment. It's, it's what we need to do. We need to do more with, uh, with, the, with the land and the water and the energy that we have. So let's try some. Yes, yes, let's. This is a handful of some of the crops that our customers can grow. So first of all, why don't we look at some of the lettuces? So we've got a wide variety of lettuces here. One that's really popular is, is butter lettuce. We've all grown up eating uh, a lettuce that's usually been left in the field too long. So they're, they're taller, but then of course the bottom end ends up being too hard and woody. We've got to cut that off. The outside leaves usually get a little bit nasty. So by the time you, you get rid of all of that, you're, you end up with a similar amount of food, right. but the plant isn't optimal for flavor then. So if you harvest the plant at the perfect time, it tastes better, the texture's better. Go ahead and just take a piece off. Oh, that's so great. It's really good. 
Growing up, my family lived in an apartment and we cleared out a patch of weeds so we could grow our own food. Today, I grow veggies in a shared community space like this. Community gardens are a great way to grow food in the city. And though we can't grow a state-of-the-art vertical farm in our own backyard, we can build a version of it with a few simple items from the hardware store. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make this vertical garden at home. I'm using a cotton hanging shoe organizer to build our vertical planter. So first we're gonna add a little soil to the seed starting pots. And now we're gonna add seeds to the pots. So you're gonna put your potted seedlings into the shoe planter. All the heavier vegetables should be kept at the bottom, whereas lighter things like herbs, lettuce, and greens should be at the top. So as you can see, there is quite a bit of space inside the planter, but when the plant matures, it's gonna take up most of the space. So whether you buy food from a sustainable supplier or find innovative ways to grow food in the city, you have the power to make your community more food secure.